Well, good morning, kids. And I uh, just want to start off with saying, miss you guys, miss hearing you guys singing uh, when we're all here together. Uh, but I'm so glad you've joined us this morning online. Um, we are going to start off today with another missions minute from the Height family in Taiwan, uh, where they run a school called Taiwan Sh Sunshine. And it's for uh, kids and families with special needs. And um, Taiwan, like many other places, have uh, a lot of people who may look at special needs as just a struggle or just uh, something to be looked down on. But uh, the Heights work very hard at Taiwan Sunshine to uh, teach and help people to know that uh, people with special needs and all people are uh, people that God loves and values and that we can love and value them as well. So check out our Missions Minute. It's a video that has uh, just a slideshow of a bunch of different ways that uh, they help show love and value to people with special needs in Taiwan. God is doing some awesome work through the Height family in Taiwan, with Taiwan Sunshine, and there is a lot of that same great work being done here uh, in the U.S., and I'm grateful for the people uh, who, who do that work. Um, so let's move on today with our big picture question, and our big picture question is again a big one. It is, who is in control of everything? And we can be grateful that this answer never changes. It's always the same Let's read this answer together. One, two, three. God is in control of everything in heaven and on earth. Amen. It's something I'm very grateful for. God is in control. And it's a good thing that he's in control because he knows what is good for us and he knows what is good for all that he has created. And we can trust him to lead us into good things. Up next, we're doing our key passage. This is our memory verse. And uh, we've been doing this for uh, two weeks now. This is our third week. So uh, we're going to go read this together uh, with the motions. So read this together once, and then we'll do it again with the motions. So let's read it for the first time. One, two, three. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while. 1 Peter 5.10. So now let's go through it again with our emotions. You guys ready? It goes like this. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered for a little while. 1 Peter 5.10. It's a great memory verse, especially for right now. So I'm grateful that God has set it up for us to have it at this time. 
Um, so let's get into our Bible story for today. But last week, last week we learned about uh, a Jewish man named Nehemiah, who was a cupbearer to the king and uh, the king of Persia, and he had heard that the people in Jerusalem were struggling because the walls and gates had been destroyed, and the Israelites who were back there were not doing well. They could not protect themselves from those who wanted to hurt them. Uh, and so when the king gave permission for Nehemiah to go back and rebuild the wall, he was all over it, and he went right back, and he was a great leader for the people. And he led them in defending themselves and building the walls up in Jerusalem. And they finished it in 52 days. That was super, super fast to build walls around a city. This week, we're picking up with uh, the people of Jerusalem right after the wall got finished. And they're ready to celebrate. And uh, they're all gathered at a gate to have the Bible read to them. And they knew just the guy for the job. They had a guy who was working really closely with Nehemiah in leading them, kind of co-leading the people of Jerusalem. And this guy's name was Ezra. Let's say this together. One, two, three. Ezra. So Ezra was a cool dude. He had two main jobs. He was a scribe. Remember we had learned about Zechariah a while ago who was also a scribe. So his job was to copy the Bible over and over and over again so he knew it really well. And another job that went really well with it, he was also a priest. So he worked in the temple doing sacrifices and uh, serving the people and, and worshiping God. So he was also a priest. So he was a scribe and a priest. And he was kind of co-leading Jerusalem with Nehemiah. So they knew that he was the guy that they wanted to hear from when they were going to have the word read to them. And I'm going to read a little bit of how this went down in Nehemiah. This is Nehemiah chapter 8, starting at verse one. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people gathered together at the square in front of the water gate. That's one of the gates in, in Jerusalem. They asked the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had given to Israel. On the first day of the seventh month, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could listen with understanding. So they had set up this big wooden platform, kind of like a big stage or a tower, so that Ezra could read from it. Everybody could see him. Everybody could hear him. And the word was written, the book of Moses, the Bible, was written on this big scroll. This is my scroll today. And so he brought that thing up. He unrolled it, and he started to read. He read for hours. He read from morning, from, it says, when the sun came up all the way until noon. He read for hours and hours. But the people were so excited to hear the word of God that they stayed the whole time. And not only that, but they stood up the whole time. So if you want, you can stand up with me. Stand up. And they stood to listen to the word of God because this was a really big deal for them. This uh, was back in the time when they didn't have, uh, each person didn't have their own Bible sitting in their home. And they didn't have, like, uh, we have, like, what, hundreds of copies of the Bible in, in this church building here? Um, but it was really hard to come by, maybe only really rich people, and then the temple would have a few copies of the Bible, uh, just because, you remember, he had to write it out the whole time by hand. So these people who had been living in um, Babylon, and, and they might not have heard God's word written, uh, read to them, or even read it themselves, maybe even in their whole lives, or for years and years at a time. So this was huge. So they stood, and they listened very closely, and they were, wanted to honor God by standing and listening the whole time. So Ezra read for hours and hours, and the people listened, and they stood, and at the, uh, at the end, they bowed down and lifted up their hands, and they said, Amen! Amen! And they worshiped God. They were so thankful to God that he had given them his word and a time to listen to it. So they worshiped together. There were some other people there that went around. There were these people called the Levites. Let's say this together. One, two, three. Levites. So these were the people of one of the tribes of Israel. They were from the tribe of Levi. It means Levi was the guy who started it. It was their great-great-grandpa. And they had a special job. The Levites' job was to be helpers to the priests in the temple and cleaning and also in teaching the people. And so as Ezra read, the Levites went around and if people were having trouble understanding it, because remember, this is the first time they've heard this and the Bible isn't always super easy to understand, they would go around answering questions and giving more detail and teaching the people who were hearing um, what 
all of this word of God for the first time and what it would mean for their lives. So the Levites were going around helping and teaching. Um, the people, when they heard the law, you see, look, look at some of their faces here. If we look at our picture, this guy's pretty shocked. He's got lots of jaws hanging open. She looks really concerned. And this was really new to a lot of them. And, and some of them started to cry. They started to cry because they started to realize that they had not been following God's law. And they might not have even known it. Think of it like this. Or actually here. This, this is something that we call uh, conviction. Something we call conviction. When the Holy Spirit brings conviction, it helps you to know that there's something you've done that is wrong. And it is super, super important. When uh, the people heard the law, heard God's rules for living, and uh, the Spirit came on them and brought conviction, they realized that they had sinned. And uh, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes us aware of this. So think of it like this. Have you ever done something that you weren't supposed to do before? Maybe taken something you shouldn't have, said something hurtful that you should not have said, um, or just did, did something that was against the rules. You hit something, hit someone, whatever. But you didn't really think about it. You just kind of did it, moved on, no big deal. Uh, you know, don't really feel bad, just moving on, no issue. Just did it. It happened. No worries. You go on for a while, but then maybe your teacher or mommy or daddy come to talk to you about it. Or sometimes they don't even have to say anything. All they do is they just give you that look. They give you the look, and all of a sudden you know. You know you did something wrong, and you know it's a problem, and you know you need to never do that again, and you know it's an issue. It's a lot like that, where they had been doing these things that were against God's word, but they didn't really know it because they had never really heard God's word. But when they heard it, that was like God giving them that look. The Holy Spirit came and started to talk to them and say, hey, you've not been doing the right things. And they realized, oh my goodness, I have not. And they started to cry and they started to weep. They ripped their clothes and they were so distraught. They were upset. We need to follow God. And so they did something. This is another kind of vocab word. We talked about conviction that Holy Spirit was bringing. So they decided to repent. Repent is another big word of, it's this idea of changing your ways. They realize what they're doing is wrong, so they're going to change their ways. And um, it's, it's like a full turning around. You're going this way, doing bad things. You're going to turn around. Now I'm going to go this way and do good things. I'm going to follow God with my ways. So the people decided to repent. Let's say repent with me. One, two, three. Repent. So this was a big, big deal. So Ezra and Nehemiah and all the Levites, the leaders of the people, they told them, Wait, 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 wait. This is an amazing thing that the Holy Spirit has done in bringing conviction and leading you to repentance. We're, we are going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate because this is such a good, good thing. So uh, even though the people's sin made them sad, they decided they were going to celebrate that day because God had done a good thing for them. He, Ezra told them, go and prepare a feast Eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and share what you've prepared with those who don't have anything prepared so that they can celebrate as well. And he also said, today is a holy day to the Lord our God. It is not a day to be sad, but a day for celebrating because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the people obeyed Ezra. They prepared a feast and they were glad because they understood the words of the law that had been explained to them. Nehemiah had led God's people uh, to repent and confess their sin, and they agreed to worship only God and to obey him. Well, God has the power to change our hearts, and that is not something that we can do on our own. God is always the initiator of salvation, so uh, God is the one who called to Abraham. He started that conversation. God is the one who spoke to the hearts of these Israelites in our story today. He he reached out to them through his word and through using Ezra to read it to them. He also sent his son, Jesus, and he also calls to every one of your hearts, too. Let me tell you this. Feeling conviction is not fun. It's not fun realizing you're wrong or you've done bad things. 
Uh, it's, there's a reason the Israelites cried. It doesn't feel good. But there is a reason to celebrate when we feel conviction because there is no punishment for those things we've done because that punishment has been laid on Jesus Christ. We don't have to fear punishment, but we can lean into the love and the goodness of God because he has laid the punishment of every believer on Jesus. So conviction may not feel good, but it makes us better people and is a reason to celebrate. So uh, let's pray together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have convicted me of my sin to put my faith in Jesus and have my punishment go on him. I thank you for every believer out there who is listening and watching this. I thank you that you have given them conviction to have faith in Jesus. God, I also pray for those who have never felt conviction, who have never been drawn to you to put their faith in your son Jesus. I pray that you would do that to them right now this morning that your spirit would fall and convict them of uh, the things they have done wrong, the areas they have been disobedient, but that they can put their faith in Jesus and celebrate the goodness of what you have done in their lives in bringing salvation. So I pray that you would just bring that to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining us today. I'm so glad that you did. Uh, We'd love to have you join us next week. Um, But until then, remember, God is good. Love you guys. Miss you and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.